Studios in Burbank, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Featuring Bradford Marsalis and The Tonight Show Band. Tonight, Jay welcomes Robin Williams. And the music of Harry Connick Jr. their tickets, yeah. I guess you know the big flight attendant strike ended yesterday, thankfully. Although, you know, officially it's not over. It's very complicated. I guess American Airlines has agreed to submit their disagreement with the flight attendants to what they call binding arbitration, but on two conditions. See, the flight attendants have to start negotiating on a Tuesday, and they must stay over at least one Saturday, apparently. So it's a very complicated thing. So I don't know. Yeah. And the Bob Packwood saga continues. You know, Bob Packwood's still refusing to give up his diaries. So now the Senate is suing him for them. They're suing him. So it looked like Packwood's finally getting to know what it feels like when someone won't take no for an answer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to see what it's like there, yeah. You know, and now he's not going to resign. I guess Friday there was talk he's going to resign. Now Packwood says he's not going to resign. Aren't you sick and tired of this whole thing? I mean, please. Uh, do you remember? No. Remember the good old days when a politician putting his hands in his pocket just meant he was after your money? Huh? You know? <laughs> and friends of Bob Packwood said in the paper today, the senator is becoming depressed and despondent. And, uh, you know, I think it's true. In fact, last night he went to a wet t-shirt contest and left early. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, I don't know. Brady Bill is stalled again because the Senate wants the waiting period phased out in four years, the House wants it phased out in five years, and now they're trying to work out a compromise. Hey, I got an idea. How about four and a half years? Can we move on now, please? Huh? Does that take a lot of thought? Thank you. Can we move on? You know, you know, you know, if criminals had to wait as long for a handgun as we have to wait for the Brady Bill, we wouldn't need the Brady Bill. You know. <laughs> And some Senate Republicans are refusing uh, to give final passage on the Brady Bill. See, this is a big dilemma for them. You know, on one hand, they want to vote and go home for Thanksgiving, but on the other hand, the longer they hold out, the bigger that NRA Christmas bonus. You know, so it's tough. It's, it's tricky. It's tricky. You know what's amazing? Some senators haven't even read the bill yet. In fact, today, three of them admitted the only reason they even signed the bill was they thought it'd give them a chance to meet Marsha Brady. You know, <laughs> Go. Now, Kevin, you're a big Brady Bunch fan, aren't you? Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, you just go crazy. And speaking of that, you know, I see an ad in a magazine today. See this ad? Actually, it's in today's paper. It said, don't wait for the five-day waiting period for a handgun when you can buy it today through the mail. And then it says, allow four to six weeks for delivery. The stupidest ad. Anybody see 60 Minutes this past Sunday? This was an amazing story to me. Did anybody see it? Come on. Well, they showed how the CIA imported a ton, a ton of cocaine into the United States and let it be sold on the streets. You know, this isn't a bad idea if you want to stop uh, drug trafficking in the United States. Put government agencies in charge. Before you know it, there'll be red tape, profits will be down, there'll be layoffs, sales will slump, the whole thing will just fold under its own weight. Yeah, you know, put them in charge. And plans are now underway to build Russia's first four-star hotel. Actually, their standards are a little bit different. See, over there, a four-star four hotel is just a Motel 6 with, like, an extra roll of toilet paper. That's really not, not really a big deal. And old Michael Jackson, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I think he's, he's really serious about staying out of the public spotlight. In fact, today, he joined the Cincinnati Bengals fan club. Oh, boy. <laughs> He really does want to hide out. 
You know, I don't know what to make of it. It's just getting scary. A doctor in London said today, Michael Jackson is now going through group therapy. <laughs> Boy, how'd you like to be in that group, huh? <laughs> I mean, imagine you're trying to recover from drug addiction. Your mind is just fried. You look up, some guy dressed like a Klingon general walks in backward carrying a monkey. Ah, oh, flashback! Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, get this. The Home Shopping Network has rejected Heidi Fleiss's request to sell her new line of sleepwear on the program. Well, how bad do you have to be to have your stuff rejected by the Home Shopping Network? Huh? I mean, really, what's next on the retail food chain? What, do you hold the underwear up next to freeway on-ramps? I mean, come on. <laughs> getting all, getting ready for Thanksgiving? Bradford, you going home? Yep. Going home to see the folks? Yeah, it'll be fun. fun. I was wondering, I wonder what Thanksgiving is like at Gallagher's house. You know Gallagher, the comedian? <laughs> you, know, you think they bring out the food, and then he just starts smashing it with that big thing in? <laughs> hey, have you seen this uh, Woolite commercial where the agitator inside the washing machine turns into a pair of hands? Have you seen that? <laughs> I forgot to get the feeling that maybe the Maytag repairman isn't as lonely as we once thought. Oh, here you go, Bramford, some music news. All right. Have you heard about this? Big controversy now over who wrote one of Billy Ray Cyrus' songs, and it's gone to court. Boy, how does that argument work? It's they stand in court. No, you wrote it. No, you wrote it. No, you wrote it. No, I didn't write it. No, he wrote it. No, he wrote it. Yeah, Jay. What? Yeah, Jay. <laughs> a big Billy Ray fan, right? Oh, huge. Huge Billy Ray fan. Unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah. I like Billy Ray. Been a frequent guest on the program. And Beverly Hills, 90210 star. Well, Luke Perry got married this past weekend. He's a nice guy. He got married. I'm glad he got married. Look, girl. Oh, you sad? He got... Yeah, like you had a shot. Look at the lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting up there with a beer and a box of donuts. Oh, man. I thought... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Tough break. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I see him on... Uh... I see him on the news, they asked him why he got married, and he said, well, I'm not getting any younger. You know, look, I've seen the show, you're not getting any older either. No. <laughs> He's been 17 for what, nine years now? Come on, look! You're like frozen in time. No. And our good friend, and I guess tonight, Robin Williams, stars in this new movie. Oh, we saw it last night, great movie. Great movie. <laughs> this movie, Mrs. Doubtfire, where he dresses like a, like a woman. Uh, it's very realistic and very funny, too. Boy, this, I, I think it's the best movie yet, but, but give you an idea how authentic the makeup was. During the filming, he was sexually harassed twice by Bob Packwood. That shows you... Just... <laughs> Here's something interesting. In Australia, Madonna met with a group of Australian triathletes. You see, Madonna is a biathlete. Now, she didn't even know... <laughs> She didn't know there was a third choice. She was fascinated by this. Man, bye, I want to be try. How do you be try? What is that? Huh? Is there a different mammal involved? What is that? What is a try? Man. And finally, our old buddy John Bobbitt. You know, poor John Bobbitt, the guy from... Uh... We have a man from Manassas here, right, sir? A guy from Manassas sitting up there? Guy, guy wearing the steel cup in the audience there? Yeah, there you are. Well, he said, uh, I guess he's doing well, and uh, the operation was success. And he says his recovery program, this is interesting, includes looking at pictures of naked women while medical experts measure his reaction. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how many men are involved in the same program without the medical experts around. You know, I, I realized I, I was in recovery for years and never even knew it. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Well, we got a great show tonight. Now, now, see, sometimes we say that, and the shows are merely extra good. But tonight, truly, truly a great, because we have two great, great guests. Robin Williams is here. Robin Williams. And our old friend and a good, good, uh, good favorite of the show here, Harry Connick Jr., Harry Connick Jr. The jazz man, Frankfurt myself. The jazz man. I like that.
Las Vegas over the weekend. I thought it'd be fun to take a camera crew out on the streets and just talk to people who came to Vegas to gamble and see how they were doing money-wise and just kind of get a feel of the place. So we went to jaywalking in Las Vegas, and uh, here's what we came up with. Take a look. So you guys doing some gambling? Oh, yeah, we're trying to. Anyway. Trying to. How much money did you bring to gamble with? How much money? You know, I only brought, like, um, $200. $200? $200. Like, low, I guess. So are you up or here. down? Uh, down. Down. How far are you down? All the way down. <laughs> All the way down. You lost the whole, you lost the whole 200? And you're from Maine? From Sugarloaf, USA. And this is your first time out of the state of Maine? No, it's first time on vacation. Oh, first time on vacation. Okay. And I came to Las Vegas. I lost six bucks. You lost six bucks. Now, for Maine, that would be about, uh, that's a pretty big chunk of that yearly income, isn't it? Now, what do you think the folks in Maine will think when they found out you lost six bucks? I'm going to die that I even bet six bucks. Yeah, well, that's a lot. So what's the secret to winning a blackjack? Best instinct. Go with your best instinct. That's the only secret it is. Now, did you go with your best instinct? I went with my best instinct. And you're down $200. I'm down, too. How about you, sir? You got a uh, system? Uh, it's not working either. And what is your system? Uh, keep raising the bet until you win. Keep raising the bet until you win. You know, I think the hotel encourages that system. I think they like uh, me. They yeah, like yeah. me a lot. You want to gamble on a fast $100 bill? A fast $100 bill yeah. on what? Odd or even. I've got a 20, and you guess odd or even. Last digit? Okay, I'll give it to even. You say it's even? Yeah. So if it's odd, you got to give me 20. Right. And you will. <laughs> it's odd. No kidding. Boy, these fast-talking people from Iowa. Hey, I like this game. <laughs> so how's the gambling going? Uh, four for me, good for Jeff. Yeah, how much are you down? I'm down about uh, 150 200 dollars probably. Pretty upset saying. about it? Well, I, and you anticipate losing. Yeah. You know? Uh, so you go in with a losing attitude that, is what that's, you're saying. <laughs> that's probably the wrong way to approach it, yeah. but yes, unfortunately, yes. You make a fine, you fine coach. <laughs> I am a coach. <laughs> oh, are you a coach? Yes, I am. <laughs> what do you coach? I coach basketball. <laughs> now, you just learned how to play craps uh -huh. today? About two hours ago. You just learned two hours ago, and you're up how much money? Well, I doubled my money. So what did you learn? What is the secret? Um, look at the guy next to you who's winning a lot of money and do what he does. Oh, that, that, that's really the, the secret. If we gave you $100 right now, could you go in and win it? Yes. You're positive? Positive. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we'll give you 10 minutes to go in and see how you do. Okay. We'll give you 100 bucks. Here we go, here's 100 bucks. Now, you say you're an expert craft player, and you will uh, see how much money you make in... Yeah. I'll double it. You'll double it. What's your game? Roulette. You have a system? Yeah, the system is I play my kids' ages, <laughs> and it comes in. How many kids you got? Five. You got five kids. What are the ages? 12, 13, uh, 19, 20, and 21. Yeah, so if we were to give you like 100 bucks, do mm -hmm. you think you could double your money? I think I could. You give a hundred bucks. Okay. <laughs> give you ten minutes. And you tell us how you did. Now, Ann's come back. Ann, come on over here. How'd you make out? Well, here's your hundred and here's really? my hundred twenty-one. Wow, so you doubled your money? More than doubled. Well, that's amazing. Take so, your money out of stocks and give them to me. Wow. So this is the hundred we gave you. And you get to keep all the money? Yeah. Thank wow. you. Joe, how'd you make out? Didn't do that good. Didn't do that good? How much did you win? I didn't. I didn't win. But you, you're going to play your kid's number. I know. My kids did bad luck for me right now. You're going to kid in. So you're going to punish the kids when they get, when they get home? When they get home. Yeah, you're just going to punish the kids? They owe me a hundred bucks. I'm going to send it to you. No, you owe me a hundred bucks. So you lost the whole hundred? The whole hundred. Yeah, all right, Joe. Thanks. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for trying. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to try it again? Double or nothing? Okay. All right. Double or nothing. The interior of the new Honda Accord creates an open environment. It's roomy and comfortable and available in fine leather. The reinforced body is insulated to be quieter than ever. When you consider everything the new Accord has to offer, it becomes an open and shut case. The new Accord EX from Honda. J.C. Penney, one of our most well-known brands, doesn't appear on any label. It's a brand as popular as Worthington. 
a brand as classic as Hunt Club, and a brand as up-to-date as by design. It's JCPenney's unique brand of value. And like Worthington, Hunt Club, and by design, our brand of value is found nowhere else in the world. The 1994 Nissan Sentra with an airbag, cruise control, air conditioning, and a four-speaker cassette stereo costs $2,000 less than a comparably equipped Toyota Corolla. $2,000. Just think, you can use that to buy your first tank of gas. Should you prefer a lease, you can get a Sentra for $500 down and $189 a month for 36 months. It's Christmas at the Opera House. Let Tammy at the Tila Ray Clothing and help you select gifts that reflect taste and originality. Featuring specialty sweaters, romantic dresses, and accessories. See exquisite gift ideas from Rising Sun Gallery and Gifts, featuring regional and northwest art, plus classic to contemporary home accessories. Enjoy specialized espresso and muffins in a friendly country atmosphere while you browse through one-of-a-kind handcrafted gift items from City Espresso Country Charm. It's Christmas at the Opera House on North Front Street. He's a hugely popular actor and comedian whose films include Good Morning Vietnam, Awakenings, The Fisher Kings, his latest movie, Mrs. Doubtfire, which I saw last night. Boy, this is a very funny movie. You'll really enjoy it as it opens tomorrow. Please welcome the one and only, Robin Williams! your tie in a tumble dryer, ladies and gentlemen. What is that? It's a... Once again, dry cleaning. The word for today. It's I think a... that's called martinizing. Yeah. Isn't it? It's one of those Catholic ties. Oh, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. <laughs> swear to God, I never did that. Swear to God. Look, Mr. Bobbitt. I'm sorry. Hello. You look Amazing. good. You lost some weight. Look at you. You've been working out. You've been... Yeah, I run a lot. So it's, yeah. it's so much cheaper than the old days. You know? yeah. 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 So it's easier to go... Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I just need a pair of shoes, man. Thank you. <laughs> now you run at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm fine, I'm fine. Now, how far do you run when you run? How far do you go? I run about uh, six miles. I don't try and go too much further than that because after a while, even your whole body goes, that's it, I'm out of here, man. Yeah, so <laughs> At that point, your lower track goes, I'm just going to open up and let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden... It's very frightening. Even dogs are about to bite you. Are going, you know what? Oh no, man! <laughs> wow! Something died inside you, man. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's good it's, to see you. It's gonna... a great start. What? We're off and running. We're already doing all of that. But yeah, yeah. Getting well, ready. For... Wait, what are you having Thanksgiving? You having the family? Are, are you going home? Are you going to be on I'm the road? I'm just going to go down to the mission again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. You get yourself some turkey roll, and then. Uh, you get some of that Velveeta cheese left over from Ronald Reagan. <laughs> it's a nice thing. You go down there and afterwards you just go outside and, you know, it's nice when I wander around San Francisco now, Thanksgiving. Some of the winos, the guys know me now, so they're going, hey, Robbo! I hear your new movie's good. How about you buy me a bottle of Dom Perignon? That'd be better, Jack. You know, maybe some quiche would be in order. Well, you used to work the streets. I knew you when oh, you were yeah, mime. Oh, it was a mime. Oh, that was a frightening thing. The world's most annoying mime, as I remember. <laughs> I yeah. Yeah. Doing mime in New York is a little scary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you used to imitate... I would imitate people. People would walk by. You'd have these very elegant ladies in... Uh, it'd be uh, in front of the Metropolitan Museum. And they're the scariest ladies of all. 
with the ones in the furs. You know, not, they're not just wearing one dead animal, they got the entire species. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and even the animal head's going, kill me! <laughs> and you'd walk by, and she's like this, and I'd, you imitate them, and she, I, one lady really got really angry, she said, if you take one more step behind me, I will turn around and put my hand way up you. <laughs> so, well, thanks, at least it's an evening. <laughs> What was the biggest tip you ever got as a mime? I mean, the people would... Did you do the hat thing? Because I remember... Yeah, the hat Francisco, thing was always yeah. big. There was, yeah, uh, yeah. You put the hat out and you get coins, condoms, you know, all yeah. sorts of... Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Good luck. You know, good day. Um, I think some days... It was, all, it was all coins. When you make, like, you know, $2,000 in pennies, it's a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like... It was, it was fun performing on the street. It always gave you... It was always... You know, you always had some guy come up going, What's wrong, clown? Are you sick? <laughs> And then babies. I think, I do believe that clowns have something with babies that are deepest, deepest, scariest thing in the world. They always have, you know, party clowns at right, kids' right. parties. Why can't they have adult party clowns? Hey, everybody, look, I'm going to make a little balloon animal here. Look at the size of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, everybody, before I do some more balloon animals, here's some Prozac so the party goes better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that the clown... Yeah. The clown thing, I would be a mime, and you'd see little kids, and the, the mothers would bring them up going, oh, look, it's a mime. And the, this kid was like looking at the Antichrist. It was like, <gasps> <laughs> People are frightened of clowns. I think so. Oh, it's a very strange thing. I mean, you see a giant guy, usually with a red nose and a white face, they're dead, you know? Yeah, or, <laughs> or in Congress. Hey, but you know, hey, 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 hey. What I want to tell you, Mr. Packwood, got yeah. any pictures? <laughs> <laughs> look at the size of that caucus. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been commenting on the political scene in your act? I watched the things? debates. The debates to me were astonishing. I mean, it, was a, it, it ended being, it started off, it wasn't a, b a debate from the very beginning. It was like kind of like World Wrestling Federation. Yeah, I'll be there. You're a liar and I can kill that snake. Thank you. <laughs> and slowly but surely, he started to transform when, and Al Gore basically, he's, he's like Mr. Rogers. Huh, can you say mutually assured marketing? <laughs> Today, our trade barriers are coming down. Can you say trade barrier? <laughs> No, I can't say it. I'm not going to say it because you're a liar. And I, I, you're, can you hear any of that? Did you suck it down? You jabbed the good weed out of here. Yeah, Pepina, Pepina got in the outhouse and the outhouse is already in. Oh, God. Uh, tell me about the squash, the marbles. The men never held the balls. I. Sorry. <laughs> Kind of like Walter Brennan there. Yeah, it's a transitional piece. All right, we'll be right back with Robin Ray. Right <laughs> my cold medicine almost got rid of my head cold. <laughs> it kind of helped this thing in my chest. <coughs> Maybe your cold medicine's not working because it treats all colds the same. Introducing one that doesn't. New Bayer Select Cold Medicines. Powerful ingredients so exacting to be more. Each goes after specific symptoms and for powerful relief. New aspirin-free Bayer Select targeted cold medicines. Exactly what's right for exactly what's wrong. Excuse me, think all bathroom tissues are the same? Excuse me? What? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> You're not for real, are you? All no, same. tissue is tissue. You obviously haven't tried new Charmin Ultra. Okay, it's a little soft. It's a little like cushier. In fact, it's maybe a lot softer. It's better. Yeah. yeah. I like it. You want to sleep in it. New Charmin Ultra is so much thicker, it would take 75 more sheets of the next leading national brand to be just as thick. So we were wrong. This I is great. This really? is good thicker. stuff. Thicker. We like it. Softer, thicker. New Charmin Ultra. Can we keep Can we this? Get this? I have a thing sticking out of me. The game is taboo. How would you get your team to guess the secret word without using the five best clues? It's going to come out right here. And I, and, uh, and I prance around out in the wilderness. A moose. And I'm, I'm very... A leprechaun. Mm -hmm. You're crazy. I am that, but no. So I have a thing coming out of my head. You have your brains coming out of your head. Play taboo and celebrity taboo from Milton Bradley. And I prance around the forest. You're a unicorn. Yes. <laughs> Downtown, that is, to the Yakima Mall this Friday. Get there at 8 a.m. and have breakfast courtesy of Mocha Tree, Orange Julius, and Cinnabon. Shoppers receive a special shopping bag. Well, the kids get free coloring books, candy, and balloons. Say hello to the talking Christmas tree. And, of course, see Santa. Santa Claus is coming to this 
Friday. I don't know if I've ever told you this, <laughs> but once in a while I'm sitting there, and you're right over here, and the guest is there, and I find myself running dry. Oh, yeah? Not, Not another you. thought <laughs> in my head, and I wait to hear you go, because I know <laughs> when you're gearing up, I know a question's going to come. And when I don't hear, I know you're wandering somewhere, too. That's when I rely on you to come through. Our friend, uh, our friend John Bobbitt, do you have any feelings on that situation? Robert? Feelings on that situation? <laughs> I'm sure John can't have any feelings at all. Oh, hey. The moment he gets even halfway excited, you know, somebody pretty walks by, it's like, oh, no, no, snap! Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Yeah, see, what do I do? A little super glue and then drive to the hospital. <laughs> I mean, he must be, uh, not to be blunt, but I mean, if they found it in a field, he must be quite big. I mean, it's like... I mean, I'm not... So two guys are going, Bobby, what's that? It's a mushroom. Okay. You know, <coughs> but it is a... It is a strange... Amazing, it's not just... I mean, it's a, a strangely ironic Bobbit. She didn't Bobbit. She took everything. Right. Like, she took it, baby. John took it. It's gone now. <laughs> And I know some women are saying, mm-hmm, she threw away the wrong part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Throw away the part with the mind and the, the talks. Get rid of that. <laughs> Throw that away. <laughs> Put the other one in the freezer. Couldn't be any colder than him. <laughs> mm -hmm. But every guy right now is going, eh, it's real funny, man. <laughs> every guy goes to bed half like this. Now it's like, good night, honey, good night. sleeping on his stomach from now on. Everybody's I mean, on the floor like, good night, baby! <laughs> He's got couches lined up, everything. <laughs> it's way beyond birth control. It's now, how about, uh, how about President Clinton? He seems to be on a roll now. Do you have, uh... Bill? Bill, I, I think Bill is done with the whole NASCAR, um, NAFTA thing. NAFTA? <laughs> yeah. Always messed up. NAFTA, incredible, that free trade. Give me thank you. I met him the other... I actually finally... I, I finally met a president. I never thought I would. Oh, I, really? Is this the first president you met? Where'd you meet him? I met him in the men's room. Oh, really? <laughs> He's a big man. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I met him. Uh, no, I can't do that. You can't be standing next to the president going, congratulations. <laughs> Mind if I shake? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, I met him. At, he was at doing some benefit in San Francisco, and I got to meet him one on one. He is. He's six three. I'm Don't going. mean he's doing a benefit. He has like an act now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you just hate it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank How you, about you know, that free trade thing? Yeah. Free trade, wow, who knew? <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here three years, isn't that wild? <laughs> but I think uh, there's something about him. He's, I don't get the sense when I met him that he's reading cue cards, you know, that he's sometimes right, right with now. other people, I kind of got that idea. Really? <laughs> nice to meet you, Reuben. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's happy days? <laughs> Now, let me ask you about, uh, about Mrs. Doubtfire now, this getting in touch with your feminine side. Is this... Yes, I finally realized that, yes, I'm also, I, re I got very much in touch, with, so much so in touch with my feminine side that every 28 days I get very moody now. Really? So, you know, I don't think we could do that shot. But it was a very strange thing. People, keep, they keep asking me, what was it like to be a woman? And I say, well, it's more like, what was it like to be inside of a woman? You know, it's like that other thing. And I see even your eyes are like, what does he mean? Well, there, there was a joke there for obvious There was for a brief yeah, moment, yeah, but yeah, now it's somewhere on the freeway. Well, how about your kids now? Your kids are little. What do they think when they see daddy dressed 